Betty, you start. <laughs> we'll start today. Okay, Eugene. <laughs> sure, no problem. All right, first day at Arangong. May 6, 1923, the new era. Having finished the prayers, I came to the station and joined doctor with bag and baggage in accordance with Baba's orders. The train steamed out of the Pune station at about 7.30, reaching Ahmednagar at 1230. We took carriages and went direct to Rustam's house, finding the same buzzing with marriage preparations. We came to know that since Baba's arrival, he has been on the move from the depot, the old military depot buildings purchased by Khan Sahib in Nagar, where he and party put up for a few days. Baba suddenly walked away with the party to Happy Valley, a distance of nearly 14 miles on April 1st, where he stayed till the third. Yeah. Here, Sri Maharaj's birthday was observed on the third, when the Mandali had to keep a fast for 24 hours, while hundreds of people were fed on the day. After a special arti, Baba and party started from Happy Valley at 11.30 p.m. at breakneck speed, returning to the depot at 2 a.m. in the night. Again, under the excuse that a certain number of Rustam's family did not properly follow his instructions, Baba has since day before yesterday gone to Arangaon. No wonder that in face of this hide and seek movement of Baba, together with the marriage arrangements, Rustam seemed very much perturbed. Within, I'd love to discuss afterwards, I guess. I, that's uh, what, what just what went on there. <laughs> Within a quarter of an hour, a carriage was procured and we started towards Arangon after taking some refreshment. Arangan is a small village six miles from Ahmednagar at a higher altitude with the best climate in the whole district. For this reason, a big military camp was established here in wartime over extensive grounds for miles, which has been purchased by Khan Sahib, Adi and Rustam's father, Gulmai's husband, from the government. As we neared the camp, Baba and party came to our view, washing clothes and bathing at a well by the road a little further on. We got down and dismissed the carriage, but we could not approach further as word came from Baba that we were to go and wait in the building further on the right, which was the post office of the military camp in those days. It is a, a build, well, building among the lot of dilapidated mud huts. Wait a minute. Mr. Couple. It, yeah. it is a hall about 20 by 12 feet with, a, with strong stone walls without plaster, half a dozen windows and a plain deal wood door. The front side is adorned with a veranda. In spite of it all, it is the best building among the lot of dilapidated mud huts adjoining the same. Here we found the beddings of Baba and Mandali spread side by side in a line, the latter also having a glass and a plate near their respective beddings together with their clothes. We passed the time conversing with Munshi who was here to see Baba until the time the Mandali returned from finishing the general wash up. I was no longer under the impression that, uh, sorry, I can't see that word. Uh, oh wait, that Hi Hi Hirangan, Hirani were to commence after the marriage. The signs were only too visible to be missed 
that the new era had dawned long since in right earnest. Most of the Mondali had blistered feet and bruised hands, the former being the result of the midnight racing from Happy Valley to the depot, and the latter the result of removing some hundreds of big Shahabad stone slabs from the mess building the previous day. They greeted us with a smile as if enjoying the change, though a very rough one, from the monotonous Manzil life. After supper at the usual time of going to bed, Baba ordered us to go and sleep near the well, as was done by him. And the Mondali, the first night of their arrival, when a snake was killed on the, oh, as was done by him and the Mondali, the first night of their arrival, when a snake was killed on that spot. Myself, Doctor, and Bajifdar, also a newcomer, spread our beddings near the wall of the well for, a, for protection from the great windstorm common to Erangon. Baba's presence in the near vicinity allayed the snake fear, but the wind blowing like the very devil troubled us too much. However, somehow sleep reigned supreme. May 7th, 1923, Erangon. Since some time, some time passed, almost every day witnesses a change in the daily program. By now, daily baths and prayers have ceased. Everyone is to wash his clothes himself instead of giving it to the washerman as heretofore. All have been given a plate and glass, each for meals and other necessities to be cleaned and kept in charge individually. Only three shirts, three pants, and some necessary garments, such as coat, towel, etc., have been deposited in a room in the depot and the respective trunks. Further, Baba discussed finally the future plan of action with myself and doctor, that in addition to the above changes, the surrounding grounds will be cultivated and all shall have to work as common laborers or to do some service at Nagar with the prospect of going and returning about 12 miles daily on cycle if we remained with him. Otherwise, Baba offered a second choice of staying at Bombay, Pune, or Lonapla and following his instructions there. Same as the case with almost three-fourths of the Mandali, including the chief important members of the circle like Sadashiv and Kak. Baba said that to be externally far away or to be nearby does not make any change in the spiritual working so long as one followed and remained under his instructions, he was with him. I decided to stay with Baba as I preferred it under the circumstances, though I believe the mind of a perfect master to be universal and thus omnipresent. May 8, 1923, Amateur Cook. Baba and ourselves, the whole party, came to Nagar to attend the marriage this morning. Baba put up in the solitary room on the top floor of Sarosh Manziel, the residence of Rustam, while we were ordered to go to the depot, recently named Kushru Quarters, and, and give whatever assistance required in the arrangements under Bayramji's instructions. The freshly white washed fine compound wall recently built round the new, newly painted buildings in the well-kept spacious grounds of Kushru quarters with the gaily decorated giant canopy where the marriage ceremony is to take place, just nearing completion on one side, gave the old and rustic depot a magical change of color. Sometime after our arrival, Baramji found some work for us, that of helping the cooks in trimming and cutting the vegetables. God knows how the worthy got the idea of extending our help in such a fashion. <laughs> Save that the old man might be pulling the strings from Sarosh Manzil to have us learn a practical lesson in self-humiliation. Otherwise, 
we could have helped in a hundred other ways befitting our positions. It was with an effort that I took to the work and allayed the strong feeling of revolt against this order of being taught the task of humiliation in the presence of hundreds of guests. Besides the mental pinch, the work proved very unhealthy for my hands and fingers unaccustomed to such rough work, leaving a telltale marks and cuts. Most of the Mondelez shared the same fate, while Jal topped the list by cutting his finger when cutting a potato on a machine. Snuff was afterwards applied to the cut by Kaikushru, Sarosh's father. Thanks, Betty. Sarosh's father? That's Adi's father, isn't it? Thanks, well, Betty. All right. Uh, let's see. Ann Elizabeth, are you, are you there? Are you there, Elizabeth? Mais oui, monsieur, je suis ici. Whoa! Oh, mon s'il vous plaît. Oh, mon mon. Il est nécessaire pour. Okay, just read it in English. <laughs> okay. Neither host nor guest, May 9th, 1923. Today, being the marriage day, the guests were pouring in from all quarters. Almost all of our Mondali, the Cosma party, Kak, etc., had arrived to witness the wedding of one of the most important members of the Mondali, serving as manager of the Circle and Company. Le Since leaving the Monzil, this was the first time that most of the Mondali had come together, and save for this engagement of exchanging news and views, the marriage on the whole proved a very tiring and awkward business for most of us. Considering us to be Baba's Mandali, the family members did not pay attention to us as regards the formalities to be observed with guests. Further, the family members had good reasons not to fear, not to interfere much in what we did and did not. And this was the reason that, though being shocked at seeing us mixed with the cook mixed with the cooks, Khan Sahab did not stop us from so doing the other day, save for the remark that there was really no need for us to help the cooks. <laughs> uh, our workaday dress, the sea of foreign faces around us and the Parsi customs new to us did not encourage us in feeling like hosts. Hence, as far as it did not concern us personally, the marriage was a very successful affair. In the evening, the marriage ceremony took place on the elevated platform in the center of the tent, packed full with distinguished guests, Europeans and Indians both. A European band provided fitting music for the occasion, while excellent refreshment arrangements were made. The happy event, as far as it, as far as it concerned the public, terminated after a group photo was taken of the guests with the new couple. After supper, Ghazal singing by Yasin, who had been specially brought from Bombay, took place before Baba in the Mond took place before Baba, the Mondali, and a few members of the family privately in the Sarosh Manzil. The singing continued till late in the night, affording a few hours of divine entertainment, making up to a certain extent for the feeling of being at sea for the last two days. Baba had, of course, all the time, kept himself in the Sarosh Manzil, the Mondelez presence reminding the people who knew of his presence nearby. May 10th, 1923, the remaining few. Again, guzzle singing took place this afternoon, of course, privately as before. In the evening, Kak and Kazma party left for Bombay and Pune respectively. The latter had a separate interview with Baba before their departure. Apparently, Kazma party seems to have preferred to stay at Pune, while as for Kak, it has since long been decided for him it, uh, to stay in Bombay with Munshi and Syed Sahab. Dr. Two seems to be a guest for a day or two more. In the same way, the question for Rustam is also for some time now to be dropped. Thus, 
as foretold by Baba and the Manzil, only a limited number of members remain to take direct part in the external movements of Baba for the present. That is, Messieurs Usaji, Beramji, Adi, myself, Slamson, Barsoap, Babu, Baidul, Pindu, Nervous, Masaji, Padri, and Jal. May 11, 1923. Nowhere. Some dispute arose in the family, and under this excuse, Baba suddenly asked us to join him going away just after we had finished breakfast. We started walking aimlessly towards the station. A little further on, we took to a footpath, and after a laborious tramping across a dry, sandy bed of the Sinha River, we came upon an old graveyard, quite a solitary spot. But the, but the place had but the plan had hardly settled when we were again on the move further on, unintentionally reaching the station shelter for travelers maintained by the local board. Here it was finally decided to put up until a plan was formed for future settlement. As Baba said, he was no longer going to stay at Erringal. Some vegetable was made to be prepared and bread procured from the small hotel nearby for dinner. After the meals, Baramji went to Erringown and brought back a cart full of things, including firewood, firewood from there by the evening, which was all deposited in the rooms where we had, that we had rented. Baramji and Gustaji had been ordered to take food once about 11 a.m. and drink water only between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. daily. Baba decided finally for doctor to stay in Bombay. He left after supper with Barsoap, who has also been allowed to go to Pune for a few days, according to Barsoap's words, to improve his weak health. May 12, 1923, Coolies. Only the clothes, bedding, and a few of the most necessary things having been retained, the rest of the cartload of goods brought back from Erringown yesterday was made into about half a dozen bundles and we were ordered by Baba to carry the same to the depot, about one or two miles distance from the traveler's shelter to be deposited there with our trunks, etc. Adding fuel to the fire of resentment, one of the heaviest bundles chanced to fall to my lot, which made me stagger with weight at the first lift. I felt very awkward mentally because of the big gunny sack on my shoulders, trudging along the main station road towards the city in company with the rest of the party. The top weight handicap began to, to take me, sorry, the top weight handicap began to tell tell before we had hardly crossed the city gate, making me take the sack on my head. The pain further made me indifferent now towards what people would think about us, as we were too well dressed to be taken for coolies. And this accounted for the attention that we seemed to receive from Pastors Five. So much so that I passed through. Corset G Street and Nalbun's Kut, as it was the shortest route, but which I had first intended to avoid on account of a few friends and acquaintances of mine staying near there. May 13th, 19. Did you want me to stop? Yeah, uh, this is a good spot to uh, switch readers to, um, uh, okay. to Ernie, please. Thanks, Elizabeth. Beautiful. Thank you. May 13th, 1923, settled again. After many entreaties by Khan Sahib, who had come to see Baba in the traveler shelter, it was after all decided to put up at Erangon as per the first plan. Consequently, we again found ourselves in the rural area of Erangon by the evening and took shelter in the post office. All the bag and baggage was brought back to. It has now been fixed to repair and bring round the mess building on the whole to its best and then to put up there. This building is the second best after the post office, but far bigger among the lot of remaining mud hut, among the lot of remaining mud huts. In the camp days, it was officers' mess quarters. In appearance, 
It is a neat, fine bungalow, neat, fine bungalow with two big spacious halls with bedrooms attached with bathrooms on both the wings and verandas on all sides. Fitted with Shahabad stones as flooring and Mangalore tiles on the roof. But in fact, it is a mere excuse for a building being built in mud by the wartime contractors and lying uncared for since long requiring complete overhauling. The big farms all around the mess have been settled to be cultivated by the well water. After fixing a pump there in place of the old pump, which is already fixed, but is quite out of order. For the time being, we have to take out water with a bucket and carry the same ourselves to the post office as the well is situated by the main public road about 50 yards from the mess and post office both. Thus we had, for the time being, again settled at a place busy with the thoughts of the prospect of a new experience of working as laborers on the fields from morn to eve. May 17, 1923, hard labor. For the last four days, we have been working in right earnest in cleansing, plastering, and doing the other necessary repairs to the mess quarters. No sooner is the breakfast of just tea and bread finished at seven o'clock, we get at the respective duties allotted by each by turn to each by turns. That of drawing water from the well, supplying the same to the mess, providing mud near the works from a distance, preparing mud, plastering the walls, and assisting the amateur mason, of course, one of us, in his work till late in the evening with an hour recess for meals in the afternoon. The meals consist of usual dal rice in the afternoon and bread and potatoes in the evening, while Baba is taking only some liquid food since long. Last came the whitewashing of the building. And what a mess we made by applying, or to be more exact, sprinkling, stamping, and painting the walls white with lime and handmade brushes. The work proved very painful to ourselves as the lime had worked havoc with the same, turning the palms and fingers as if boiled in tea. In spite of applying oil and drying the same on fire, they remained raw and bore signs of the havoc for days. However, we turned the dirty, dilapidated buildings full of cobwebs into a snow white place, clean as a new pen, clean as a new pen at, of course, a dear price. In addition to the usual plain food, plain living, and being cut, cut, quite cut off from the world at large, this work, like a regular laborer, looked as if a certain period of, of simple imprisonment was changed into that of hard labor. May 18, 1923, Ramzan Festival. I passed this gay festival in the Erangon Way too, as after a cold bath and change of hand washed linen, I started walking from Erangon to Nagar for attending the festival prayers there. After seeing some friends and having the usual sweets, I performed the prayers at about 9 a.m., after which, according to instructions, I went to Bapu Sahib's tomb for prayers and placed a flower sheet on the grave. Being Friday, I had to wait till late in the afternoon for Friday prayers. 
after which I returned to Erangon at about 3 p.m. with an acute thirst, having walked about 12 miles in all. The last six miles in the blazing hot sun of May. Thus the festival proved a very warm time for me. Thanks, Ernie. Um, Mayor Karan, could you unmute and continue, please? Thanks. Can I ask a question? You can ask, uh, but we're going to ignore it and continue oh. reading. The question is, what is a flower sheet? Oh, you know, like why, when why they put a when they put a, uh, um, a uh, like a, a kind of a sheet of flowers on a grave. You know, we do it too. People at Christmas put a, a sheet of evergreens on a grave. But anyway, let's stick really? with the program, which is Should reading, read? she wrote. Should I read? Mary, are you ready? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm reading. Hmm? Oh, I had <laughs> asked Mary Karan. Oh, okay, then. Uh... Yeah, there are two Mayors, so anyway. Yeah, I will read for a bit. Um, May 22nd, 1923. Baba scared by a snake. The mess quarters were quite ready for occupation today. Sri Maharaj's photos placed and incense burned in the small room on the right wing, which is to be occupied by Baba in the morning. After supper was we removed into the new premises and made ourselves at home by spreading the respective beddings on the allotted places in the hall. With a feeling of relief and satisfaction, we were preparing for sleep at the successful termination of the troublesome task of fixing up for good when the tide turned. Gusaji felt some piece of stone lying under his bedding, so he turned the same for extricating it when it was found to be a small snake snugly coiled enjoying the warmth of the wedding. How it came to be there is a mystery because at the time of cleansing the premises which were in the most dilapidated state no such thing ever came to our view while now when not only the whole building is pick and span but the surrounding Land is also clean inside out and extent. Crowned with the fact that the bidding has just been spread after sweeping the room with the respective members sitting over them, a snake is found coiled right in the center of the bedding. Baba ordered us all to remove the remove to the post office as if really scared of the snake and to such a great extent that he there and then decided to bid goodbye to Arangao and not only to leave the Ahmednagar district or the whole presidency, but the whole of India for Persia just because of snakes. I wonder what he mean, what he meant by snakes. Thus, the must talked of stay at Arangao seem to end very soon now. First tour, North India, May 23rd, 1923, preparing for the tour. It being decided to tour the north of India and visit Karachi before leaving for Persia, the whole day was passed in discussions and preparations. Quick steps were taken to stop the purchase of the bullocks for the proposed farming program and the delivery of another pump from the depot. In spite of that, the pump was found to be on the way towards Arangao and under orders. I made the pump laden car return to the depot from the midway. The pains that Rustum had taken in loading the pump in the cart after overhauling the same in order to put it into a working order had apparently been wasted to the humorous jargon of that worthy. May 25th, 1923, the tour. Everything was cleared from Morangao, even for the necessary articles required on the journey and the respective beddings. 
all articles were dispatched to our present headquarters in our room in the depot. After that, we all went to the station walking along the railway lines at about 10.30 a.m. With a hearty send-off by the throng of Baba's followers present at the station, we left Ahmednagar at 12.30 in the afternoon, reaching Manmar by the evening. At Ankai, the last station before Manmar, where for some distance the Nizam's meter gauge railway runs along that of GIP. An interesting sight came to view. The Hyderabad Mayor, the beautiful toy of a train, was trying its utmost to keep pace with ours, which provided an engaging amusement. May 27, 1923. Agra. The whole day yesterday was paused in the train. The only important sight coming to our view was that of the famous Sanchi Stupa, one of the most ancient and interesting Buddhist relics in India. The huge dome-like form of the actual shrine with the giant carved massive stone rail surrounding the same could be clearly seen from the train as it is situated on the ridge of a small hill about half a mile from the Sanchi station. Early this morning, we got down at Agra. Being quite new to the place, we underwent considerable inconvenience. The quaint way of our handling our luggage ourselves, in spite of presenting an appearance of a well-off touring party, incest the station coolies. Consequently, we had to carry the luggage round about and over the station over bridge to the opposite platform because the station master stopped us from crossing the lanes at the instance of the enraged coolies. This considerably increased the already awkward as well as painful task of handling the heavy luggage, which besides our own belongings comprised about three or four steel trunks, big holdals and beddings of Sarosh, Gulmai, Pil Pilamai, Masaji and children who also accompany us. Again, the conveyance question occupied about an hour in coming to a settlement with the carriage drivers. Last but not least was a pair of rival hotel agents buzzing with the repetition of the advantages and disadvantages of each of the hotels with the persistence of a fly that once resolves to occupy the tip of the nose. But Baba soon put an end to the dispute by putting up in the Empress Hotel situated between the city and the station. After taking tea, we stated to in the hired carriages sightseeing the city which is thick with beautiful buildings, the narrow but finely paved streets and the bajars buzzing with businesses, while the tall Friday mask of exquisite design and other public buildings added to the grandeur of this great city. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Mayor Daravala, could you continue, please? Sure, okay. From where? Top of the page, top oh. of the uh, screen. Okay, one minute. Okay. About a mile from, uh, I can't get this word. It's, it's okay. No, okay. About a mile from the city is the Taj Mahal, the beautiful blossom in marble and precious stones at the farther side of blossom in marble and, okay, marble. On one minute, precious stones at the further side of the uh, further of which the Jammu is flowing by the fine ornaments meant 17 years of patient labor, of which eleven uh, cleverest workmen uh, of the age in India carving the marble into patterns and perfect as those of rare old lace embroidery uh, and setting in bits of <clears throat> bits of first to north india semi precious stones 
as a jeweler might set them in a casket. The whole uh, snow white uh, flower like building is as perfect in detail as if it were a toy and yet it is really a building of noble uh, propositions. It stands 186 feet square. The graceful dome is 58 feet in diameter and the slender minarets at the four corners of the uh, platforms are each one 133 feet high. Most of the above has been extra, uh, extracted from descriptive card. This dream in marble is too good to be a tomb of a queen such has never been witnessed over the remains of the greatest saints, kings and warriors the world over, but it is more a monument of a great love, which is far greater than uh, this white bubble of a dome. <coughs> After uh, the inspecting the wonderful piece of Indian architecture, uh, rightly considered as one of the seven wonders of the world, uh, we came to the Agra fort for which permission had already been obtained, hardly expecting to be met with the grandeur of art, beauty, and romance awaited us. We passed very, uh, uh, we passed a very interesting day. There was, however, slight hitch in the program by way of a breeze between myself and Slamson in the morning regarding the luggage handling, upon which all were asked by Baba whether we were willing to work, and if so, we shall have to do the necessary work, whether that of a coolie or a sweeper under Bairamji's instructions. Otherwise, those who do not want to work should declare it there and then, so that no work of any kind will be entrusted to them throughout the journey. But, all were found ready to be of uh, some service and hence the matter ended. This part of the country is a perfect hell in these days, it being so very hot in spite of sleeping in the garden in the open, we felt as if packed in a small room. Oh, wow. Thank you, Meher. Um... Welcome. Mahu, could you unmute and continue, please? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh, May 28, 1923. Mutra. We left Agra at 6 this morning and at about 8 a.m. reached Mutra station. Slamson, who had been sent in advance, had rearranged for our stay at a Hindu uh, santorium, to which we drove in the hired carriages. A few miles rough drive brought us to the city proper at the splendid Harding Gate with a clock in the entrance. Unhappily, the house where we had to put up, where we had to put up was far away in the interior of the thickly clustered buildings, quite aloof from the road, access to which could be had by the fine and clean stone paved passages, but not wide enough for any kind of vehicle to pass through. As regards heat, heat, Mutra seemed to be hotter. 
Hence, the actual coolie work of taking the things from the carriages to the rooms allotted to us on the second floor was most trying to the extreme. This was especially because dozens of watermelons have increased the luggage of late being required for Bustaji. Behramji and Baba in particular, because of their still observing the fast begun since the 11th instant, moreover, Baba is still on liquids. The most unusual sight was the hundreds of monkeys jumping here, there, and everywhere. The monkeys are on religious grounds immune from any attack, however serious a mischief be committed by them. This had made them very bold, so much so that almost every house is carefully protected with iron bars fixed over every window, door, and ventilation, however big or small. Even the courtyards have iron mesh work all round, iron mesh work all round. Consequently, most of the houses look like prison cells. After taking the meals, we all repaired to the Jum Jumna, sacred river of this sacred city. We all had a bath and a general wash up by the side of the well-built steps along the river full of tortoises. And in spite of, and in spite of so much precautions, a monkey managed to help himself to massage his <laughs> trousers, <laughs> which were regained, however, after difficulties. <laughs> In the afternoon, we went round all the principal temples where Baba did the necessary ceremonies. The most important was the house where the Lord Krishna, one of the greatest teachers of the world, took birth. Baba asked us all to pay respects here. In the evening, we passed an hour or so in a boat going along the bathing steps, which extend about a mile. Excellent view of the bathing steps and the temples along the river with the city in the background was witnessed in the calm and Pool of the evening on the river. The city, means Agra, is considerably large and thickly populated to the extent of about 60,000 souls in the city proper. It has also a nice bazaar, but very few roads wide enough for any vehicle to pass through. And almost the whole city is interwoven with narrow lanes. There are many places of pilgrimage and mythological interest in the near vicinity. Under some excuse, Baba gave a ringing slap on the ears of Adi. And sometime after the storm, he nursed the same himself. March 29, 1923. The title is Passing by Delhi. We left Mutra this morning for Karachi as the visit to Delhi and Amritsar has been canceled. At about 5.30 p.m., the train approached the capital of India, affording a few horrid glimpses 
of the old and new cities. The, the Kutub Minar, the Kutub Minar and the giant Friday mosque. The station, though not very attractive, is a very commodious building having about 17 platforms being the junction of about half a dozen railways. In spite of the present long roundabout route of going to Karachi via Delhi, Batinda and Samasta, Samasta in place of the short uh, metro gauge route from Agra, we did not make a halt at Delhi, the city of cities pregnant with world famous relics, relics of religion, history, and architecture, showing truly that the present tour of Baba is not merely for the sake of sightseeing. Th thanks a lot, Ma. Beautiful. Um, Ralph, are, are you reading today? Unmute. Uh, I, I better pass. I guess I'm listening only. Sorry. Oh, oh no problem, Ralph. I'll, I'll, I'll do the last reading. I'm having phone problems and just. Excellent arrangements by way of an underground passage under the platforms worked by electric lifts for the easy and quick transportation of luggage is present at Delhi. In spite of it, we had to undergo the tedious task of removing the things over the bridge to the platform by which the NW, RY, that's probably railway mail, leaves for Batinda. In order to be assured of sufficient room in the train, we occupied a compartment with the help of a railway employee while the plane while the train was in the siding, which made us again remove the things from the platform to the siding. Baba seemed to be very ill and uneasy since this evening. May Northwest 30th. Railway. Ah, uh, thanks. May 30th, 1923, the frequent changes. In the early hours of the morning, we got down at Batinda Junction. And save for the trouble with the ticket examiners regarding the booking of the luggage, it was an easy task of removing in the other train ready along alongside the platform. In spite of it being an important junction, we could not get bread. I tried in the bazaar of the town too, but after difficulties, procured a few of very poor quality, which made our scanty breakfast. We reached Samsata in the afternoon and again left this train awaiting the Karachi mail from Lahore. Again, the railway authorities troubled us for the luggage, the Batinda people having wired them. The Karachi mail arrived by evening, quite packed like sardines in a tin with passengers. And as the train stops here for a few minutes only, the great hustle and bustle can well be imagined by the fact that in spite of the best efforts, we all got divided in several carriages, the same being the case with the luggage. Afterwards, it was decided to occupy the interclass compartment where, two, we had to fight our way in and occupy a whole bench. By and by, all of us got into this compartment with the luggage at several stoppings. And after about an hour or so, 
felt clear of the storm once again. Of course, we had to pay the difference for the interclass to the ticket inspector in the train. There is no change in the terrible heat. Well, this is a good place to pick up next week on page 202, Karachi Camp.